Hey there, kids. Section 5.1, this, fundamental identities. This is where I love this part of the trigonometry. Yes, it is a good time. It's like a game, basically, a puzzle. Each problem's like a puzzle. It's fantastic, if you ask me. Super fantastic. But so it let's can be a little in. tricky whenever you yeah. start off. So yeah. we're here to guide you through your journey of identities. So we've got, starting off here, these things called reciprocal identities, which we've kind of seen before. Yes. We've talked about how sine and cosecant are related. Re related, reciprocals of each other. Yep, and cosecant and sine would be then the reciprocal right. of that. Right, right, exactly. So we've kind of talked about these, but these are gonna be important because basically an identity means these are equal to each other, so you can replace one with the other. It's so a if, true statement. Yeah, so if you see cosecant, you can replace that with one over sine. Every single time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so tangent has one over cotangent, and cotangent has one over tangent, but we could also change tangent and cotangent, and we've mentioned these before as well. Tangent is sine over cosine, cotangent is cosine over sine. So when you have a tangent and you're thinking about changing it to something, there's actually a couple of different ways you can go depending on the problem. Right. So. But the main thing here is that an identity is an equality statement. Yes. We're not manipulating one side over the other at all. No. Right, we're just saying this equals this and it lets us replace things. Right. Now, over here, Pythagorean identities, oops, sorry. These have to do with, if you're thinking about a right triangle, um, that's when we deal with Pythagorean theorem. And if we're on the unit circle, this would be cosine of our angle, this would be sine of our angle. And over here, the radius of our circle for the unit circle is one. Well, if we do the Pythagorean theorem, cosine squared plus sine squared has to equal one. Look, that's the, that hey, identity. There you go. So, and you can get the other two by maybe dividing everything by cosine or, right, to or get, whatever. Right, to get um, tangent, you divide everything by cosine. Right, cosine squared, yep. Yep, divide everything by cosine. And then you square everything. Uh, to get the last one, you, you divide, divide by, by sine, sine, and it'll give you that. But we also, it's not just these three things that we need to realize, but we also need to realize if we manipulate these things. Like, what if we had sine squared, and we wanted it to be by itself, sine squared theta equals... One, one. minus cosine squared theta. Right, because we just subtract that cosine squared over to the other side. Right. And, and each of these, we can manipulate them in that respect. Right. So, and speaking of which, these ha where these have squared, they have to always have squared, but the reciprocal and quotient identities, you could put squared into these. Like if you have tangent squared theta, that does equal sine squared theta over cosine, over cosine squared, right, squared theta. Right. So, so all of these you can put squared into. If you need to. If you need to. If your problem is given to you that way. But these, you cannot take the squareds no, out. No, no. Sine Sin plus cosine is not one. It's not one. And, and also I will tell you that um, sine squared plus cosine squared is a great identity because that allows us to take something very complicated and put a one in its place. Right. And that's the whole thing here is we're going to be simplifying things right here. Let's do it. Let's, Let's simplify. It. Okay. Example one, evaluate without using a calculator. Oh, man. Use the Pythagorean identities rather than reference triangles. Oh, man. We've, we've seen this kind of problem and we've done uh, reference triangles to do it, but now we're going to instead say, well, we've got these identities we know to be true. Let's use those instead. They tell us that tangent theta equals five and that cosine has to be positive. Okay. And so if we want some, if we have tangent, we're basically stuck using this Pythagorean identity right here that has a tangent in it. Right? Wouldn't you say? I mean, it's either that one or sine over cosine. But that's not a Pythagorean identity. It's oh, used a Pythagorean identity. Shucks. So we have to square both sides. So tangent squared of theta. This is, is the identity we're going to use. Yep. So we're going to put in a 5 right here where tangent theta is. 5 squared, five squared yep. plus 1 equals secant squared theta. Right. So 5 squared plus 1 is 26. 26 yes. equals secant squared theta. Square root both sides, and that gives us that secant theta is the square root of 26. Right. Now, now go to the other side of the screen, and what is secant? 1 over cosine, right? Right. Now, secant is 1 over cosine, and that's how we're going to get cosine. Also, this could have been a plus or minus situation. Right, but... But they told us that cosine was positive. And cosine being positive means secant is positive. Right. So, 
Cosine is one over root twenty six, which I'm I'm happy with. I'm comfortable with, that, answer, with yeah. that answer. If you're one of those Uber nerds uh, that don't like to see radicals in the denominator, why then you just rationalize that puppy to square root of twenty six over twenty six. Right. To get sine, there's a couple different ways we could go about it. Okay. We, we could go about it and say, well, tangent was five. That's opposite over adjacent. Right. Now we have cosine, which is adjacent over Hypotenuse. hypotenuse and then we could say well sine is opposite which is five over hypotenuse which is square root of 26 i like that or you could use a pythagorean identity again and this time use the sine squared plus cosine squared equals one put this in for cosine and then solve that would have ended up with some trickiness yeah we don't want tricky not if we can avoid it i agree okay that's example one Co-function identities. Co-function identities. These are nice because they're easy to spot. Like if you see a pi over two minus theta with a trig function, this is your go-to identity. There's not any like wibbly wobbly, where mm -hmm. do I go from here kind of situation. And they don't show up too often, but when they do, they're really nice to have. Right, so you just replace, if you have sine of pi over two minus theta, you just replace it with cosine of theta. The odd even identities have to do with these functions either being odd or even like we've talked about like how if you put in a negative is it going to make your answer negative or is it just going to go away so sine tangent and cotangent are all in cosecant mm -hmm. these four right there those are all <laughs> odd because the negative gets pulled outside of them but right. secant and cosine which are reciprocals of each other. Right. Those are even, even functions. Only, uh, cosine only. Cosine only is even. So if you just have cosine only in your trig function, it's going to be even. Right. Or if you just have secant. It has a cosine in it. Which, okay, yes, has a cosine in it. So uh, you just have to use these whenever you end up seeing a negative in your angle. This is where you go to figure out, do I make the trig function negative or mm -hmm. does I, do I just drop the negative? And again, this one also not used a whole lot when you're doing your trig identities. But again, super mm -hmm. handy to have. Yes. Indeed. So example two here says, if cosine theta equals 0 0.34, find sine of theta minus pi over two. This one seems kind of tricky. It's- um, I feel like this seems tricky. Yeah, it, it does seem a little tricky. But keep in mind that uh, our, fun our identities up here are all pi over two minus theta, and this is backwards in the wrong sign. Oh, so we can just factor out the negative one. We can, we can factor out a negative one, and that gives us a positive pi over two, and then a negative theta. Oh, now it matches one of the co-function guys. Right. Well, Except that negative first, one, but he comes over here with Yeah, sine of negative something. Negative sine something. We pull the negative out. So that's negative sine. Pi over two minus theta. Pi over two minus theta. Pi over negative pi, pi over two minus theta is going to be cosine. Cosine, right. So that. the negative is still there, but sine pi over two minus theta is becomes cosine, cosine of theta. theta. We know what cosine theta is. It's 0 0.34. 0 0.34. So that means our answer is negative 0 0.34. Amazing. Using those trick identities, how easy that problem unraveled from the difficulties it looked like it was going to be. Right. Now, these first two problems were kind of... Uh, Softballs. Specific, I meant. Oh, specific. Like, I thought you were talking about easy. Now, after this, we're going we're gonna to be just simplifying things, basically. Oh, okay. All right. Simplifying, Sounds good. simplifying, simplifying. So. Sounds great. Simplify away. So we want to simplify the expression of sine cubed x plus sine x cosine squared x. So there's we, no equal sign in there. No, we're just simplifying this expression. Simplifying means to make simple. Make simple. So we can look at it this way. We have, depending on how you look at it, what? There's three trig functions here for a cube, four, five, six. There's six trig functions. We want there to be less than six trig functions. That's when we're our done. goal. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to use things that we know how to do algebraically, like factoring. Like I can factor a sign out of both of these right. because they both have signs. Right. Okay. We're going to use things like that to help us simplify. If I take a sign out of both of these, this has three signs and I took one out. So I'm left sine squared. with sine squared. Mm -hmm. 
Now, pay attention here because notice that as Mrs. Stevenson's working, there's no equal sign in here to mess with. So all, all we are really doing is just working technically with one part, one side of an equation. Right. This, We're not doing something to both sides. There's no shady business going on. There's just working one side only. Yeah. What we started with equals sine x and then in parentheses sine squared x plus cosine squared x. And now we're going to try to make this equal something else using some of our identities we know. Now, in general, you don't want to change sine to cosecant or cosine to no. secant, one over. Those are silly. But if you look back at your identities. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one. And I like it. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So this whole thing becomes one. Sine x times one is sine x. Would you agree that that is simpler than what we started with? That is, and you won't always simplify all the way down to sine x. No. But it should simplify down to something much easier than where you started. Right, right. Every now and then it's like, well, is that really simpler? But for the most part, you yeah. should be able to say, oh, yeah, that's simpler than yeah, what I we guarantee started if you with. can find a sine squared plus cosine squared, that's step number one in simplifying. Yes. Simplify the expression. Oh, I see things multiplying on the top. Ah. Why are you freaking out about that? It's because just... that's what a high school kid would do. Oh. Well, no. That's fine. We can foil this out, right? Mm, you said foil. Okay, let's do. Okay, so secant x times secant x. Secant squared x. And then secant x times negative 1. You're going to write it all out? Well, just in case they didn't realize that the middle terms would cancel out. Okay, if you say so. I trust you. One but two. you don't need the middle term there because you've got the difference of binomials... <laughs> If you recognize thing, that, if yeah. If you see it, and you, you need to be able to see that. It uh, is helpful. Very helpful with the identity. So now, though, what we really have on top is secant squared x minus 1 over sine squared x. Let me just write that. Yeah, write it down. Now, That's perfect. Now, secant squared x minus 1. We need to check our identities, I think. I think there's something we could use there. Now, we have the identity tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared. But so if you subtract 1 from both sides of that. You have secant squared theta minus, minus one. 1, which equals tangent squared. Now, we are simplifying here. So the pink part is more simplified than where we started, but we're not done. Right. So We're trying to simplify as much as possible. And in this section in your homework, it'll be like simplify until you end up with one trig function. Right. Or simplify with, until you end up with blah, blah, blah. Like co just cosine squared or just sine squared or just tangent squared. Right. That would be one trig function. One trick to this is right here we've got tangent squared x over sine squared x. Right. We don't want to change tangent squared back to secant squared x minus no. 1. No. Or uh, once, to 1 over cotangent squared. But if no. we change it to co, uh, sine, sine squared, x over cosine squared x, we right. may end up having something cancel out because of that sine squared x on the I, bottom. I agree. Uh, anytime you have a tangent squared mixed up with with a sine or cosine, always write out all the bits and pieces. Right. So now we can take... Um, hey, do you remember how you learn to multiply, divide fractions? Do you remember in like fifth grade or You whatever? multiply by the reciprocal. Yes, that's division. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay, I just flip sine squared x over 1 up here. Oh, look. Hey, the sine squareds go away. Now, would you accept 1 over cosine squared x as your answer? You know, it's really not the best answer. I agree. There's a better answer because 1 over cosine x would be... Cosecant squared. Secant. Secant squared. That's what I said. Yes. Secant, secant squared. That's yep. what I said. Secant squared x. So, file this away. 1 over cosine squared x, good job, but not done. Not quite there. You'd probably get like one point yeah, off. Yeah, you'll get, you'll get a dinghy. Okay. Okay, good talk. All right. Hey, so, we need a code word. Go! Let's put one in there. Okay, uh, code word for this video is... Man, I'm hungry. Yeah, well, have the rest. Oh, I don't have any more sandwich. So we want to simplify uh, the expression here. Well, when you have two different fractions here, probably what you're going to have to do is get a common denominator. Like, let's just throw that out there. You see fractions, common denominator is the best way to go. This denominator is 1 minus sine x. This one is cosine x. Our common denominator, therefore, will be 1 minus sine x. Times cosine x. Mm. OK, 
Okay, so that means one minus sine x over here is missing the cosine x. So we have to times the top by cosine x. So cosine x times cosine x is cosine squared x. Cosine squared x. Okay. Minus. Now, I'm just going to tell you. Anytime you put a minus sign when you're doing one of these kinds of things, always put brackets. Bracket. Okay. We've got sine x here. We're going to have to multiply it by one minus sine x. Mm. And so I know what that's going to be you, though. But Real quick, you guys see how this worked? Like I took the de the denominator over here and multiplied this numerator, the denominator. Are you done yet? The denominator over here multiplied to that numerator, and that's how that's going to work most of the time. So we've got minus sine x time. Or were you gonna? Were we gonna actually multiply? You know, it whatever out? you want to do, Mrs. Stevenson. Let's you're right. Out. Okay, sine x minus sine squared x. Now here's the deal, if you don't put that bracket in there to s separate out, what you're going to have is minus sine x you, minus sine squared x, and that's not right. It's minus sine x plus yeah, sine squared Yeah, we could have ended up with a little whoopsie there yeah. if we weren't careful, but we do have to make sure to distribute that negative Definitely to both things. Definitely distribute. So let's keep going. Cosine okay. squared x minus sine x plus, plus sine squared x. And we don't want to mess with the bottom No, 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 don't mess with the yet. bottom because something might go away. Remember, we're simplifying. We're making pretty. We're cleaning yeah. up. It, unless it's already factored for you, in general, like, you want it to be in a factored sort of right. form, which is what this is. Right. Hey, cosine squared x and sine squared x, those, if oh. you add them together, you get one. Yes. So what we're doing is we're going to take this cosine squared x plus sine squared x, and in its place, we're going to put one. Oh, that's brilliant. And then that means we still have minus sine x. That's okay. That's okay. Write it down. Go with the flow. Over. Oh, look! Look you there. Spoilers. Just wait. Wait for me to write it. Oh. Okay. Look. Oh. Top and bottom. Now we can do this because everything on the bottom is multiplying together. Right. Because it's factored like this. We have yeah. one minus sine x on top. One minus sine x on bottom. Dunskies. Dunskies. We cancel everything off the top, so that's a one over cosine. Mmm. I like it. That's really close to the best answer possible. But it's not quite there because remember, we're simplifying. So we want to, if possible, not have a fraction, one that over cosine correct. x. So secant x would be better. Now, if you'll notice, if you've watched all four, of, all five of these different examples, they were all worked out just a little bit differently. Right. But there's some strategies, and we'll especially talk about the strategies more in 5.2. Mm -hmm. But the, some of the things we did is we multiplied things out, or right. we, we factored. Or we combine common or we combine fractions with common denominators. Yes. Those are going to be the go-to things um, to do. I agree, and we're not doing something to both sides of an equation here either. So don't throw an equal sign in there and start working on two sides. Right. No. That's that's a no-no. No. Let's just do it. Just keep it simple. Yeah. Code word sandwich. In case you missed the writing up there. Code word sandwich. sandwich. Operation eat it.